This caravan of law enforcement vehicles brought notorious drug kingpin Joaquin El Chapo Guzman to federal court. He faced the judge less than 24 hours after his surprise extradition from Mexico. For years, the Sinaloa cartel has been known as one of the most powerful drug trafficking organizations in Mexico. And while the cartel has had its fair share of leaders and high-profile figures, the hitmen have genuinely been the backbone of their operations. These assassins have been responsible for carrying out some of the most heinous acts in the cartel's history, leaving behind a trail of blood and destruction in their wake. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the most lethal hitmen of the Sinaloa cartel, what happened to them, and how their actions have impacted the drug trade in Mexico. History Amid the arid, dusty landscapes of Culiacan, Sinaloa State in Mexico, a shadowy criminal organization known as the Sinaloa Cartel emerged. This international drug trafficking syndicate has gained notoriety as one of the world's most influential and feared criminal enterprises. Its origins can be traced back to the Guadalajara Cartel, an influential crime organization that held sway in the early 1980s. However, after the cartel was implicated in the torture and murder of a U.S. drug enforcement agent in 1985, the U.S. and Mexican authorities launched a massive crackdown on the syndicate, leading to its fragmentation into various groups. One of these groups found a home in Sinaloa, a state that had long been involved in the illegal drug trade as a hub for marijuana and poppy cultivation. In Sinaloa, the two most prominent figures of the Guadalajara organization, Hector Luis Palma Salazar and Joaquin Guzman Loera emerged as leaders of the Sinaloa cartel. Guzman, better known as El Chapo, would become the most famous figure of the cartel. As the power of the Colombian cartels declined in the early 1990s, Mexico emerged as a preferred route for drug trafficking into the United States. The Sinaloa cartel was at the forefront of this shift, benefiting from Guzman's innovative smuggling methods, mainly through tunnels and his extensive use of bribes. Although Guzman was arrested and sentenced to over 20 years in prison in 1993, he remained a crucial figure in the cartel and gained complete control of the organization by 1995. By the early 21st century, the Sinaloa cartel had operations in over 50 countries with a robust presence in the United States. Reports suggested that the cartel was responsible for most illegal drugs smuggled from Mexico into the U.S. The cartel was estimated to generate an annual revenue ranging from $3 billion to $39 billion, making it one of the wealthiest criminal enterprises in the world. Importance of Hitmen in the Drug Trade Hitmen have played a crucial role in the operations of the Sinaloa cartel. They carry out the cartel's most violent acts, including assassinations, kidnappings, and turf battles with rival gangs. Using hitmen allows the cartel to maintain its drug trade dominance and intimidate and eliminate anyone threatening its operations. The hitmen are typically recruited from impoverished areas and are offered significant sums of money to carry out assassinations and other violent acts. They often come from a background of poverty, violence, and limited opportunities, which makes them vulnerable to the lure of easy money. They are often tasked with various responsibilities, including protecting the cartel's drug shipments, eliminating rival cartel members and leaders, and carrying out acts of intimidation and violence against anyone threatening the cartel's interests. They are often well-trained and equipped with advanced weapons and tactics, making them highly effective at carrying out their missions. Despite the danger and violence associated with their work, hitmen are often willing to take the risk because of the financial incentives that come with it. However, their work also comes with a high price, as many hitmen end up dead or imprisoned, and their families often become targets of violence as well. Los Antrax is a notorious enforcer unit, and hit squad responsible for many violent attacks and homicides in the Mexican state of Sinaloa. The group, associated with the Sinaloa cartel, has been led by various drug lords, including L-20, El Chino Antrax, and El Sargento Phoenix. Los Antrax has gained notoriety for providing armed security services to high-ranking cartel members, such as Ismael El Mayo Zambada. Operating mainly in the capital city of Culiacan, the group is considered the most prominent and deadliest enforcer unit of the Sinaloa cartel. Los Antrax, the notorious enforcer unit and hit squad for the Sinaloa cartel, is known for its distinctive skull ring on diamonds worn by all its members. This symbol represents leadership, death, and power, 
and clearly indicates the group's violent and ruthless nature. Los Antrax's members are infamous for their willingness to carry out brutal and deadly actions, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. The group's alleged use of social media to flaunt their wealth and showcase their violent actions only adds to their notorious reputation. Their bloodthirsty actions display a clear sense of presumption and ostentation, further distinguishing these criminals. Who were the hitmen of the Sinaloa cartel? Some of the infamous members of Los Antrax include leaders Jesus Peña, Jose Rodrigo Arachiga Gamboa, a.k.a. El Chino Antrax, and Rene Velasquez Valenzuela, a.k.a. El Sargento Phoenix. 1. Jose Rodrigo Arachiga Gamboa Jose Rodrigo Arachiga Gamboa, or El Chino Antrax, was a name that struck fear into the hearts of many. He was a notorious hitman for the Sinaloa cartel. He quickly climbed the organization's ranks with his ruthless demeanor and willingness to do whatever it took to get the job done. Born into a middle-class family in Culiacan, Sinaloa, Mexico, El Chino Antrax began his life of crime as a teenager, joining the cartel and becoming one of its most feared hitmen. El Chino Antrax's reputation as a skilled assassin quickly earned him a prominent place in the cartel's hierarchy, where he was entrusted with some of the most high-profile and dangerous missions. He was implicated in the murder of Ramon Eduardo Aralano Felix, a top member of the rival Tijuana cartel, as well as in the murder of three people in a hotel in the city of Culiacan. Despite his high profile and notoriety, El Chino Antrax was able to evade law enforcement for many years. He often posted pictures on social media flaunting his lavish lifestyle, portraying himself as a wealthy, refined, world-traveling hitman a la James Bond. He was living the Sicario dream and showing people that it was possible. It was like a big recruitment advertisement. However, in 2013, he was arrested by Dutch authorities in the Netherlands and extradited to the United States, where he faced charges of drug trafficking and racketeering. El Chino Antrax pleaded guilty to these charges in 2019 and was sentenced to seven years. His sentence was later reduced to five years due to his cooperation with law enforcement. However, in 2020, he was released from prison due to concerns over the COVID-19 pandemic and placed under house arrest. Unfortunately, his freedom was short-lived. In May 2021, he was gunned down in Culiacan, allegedly by rival cartel members. His death was a stark reminder of the dangers of the drug trade and the violence that often accompanies it. 2. René Velázquez Valenzuela René Velázquez Valenzuela known to his associates as El Sargento Phoenix, El Gato Negro, and El Taliban. Valenzuela was a high-ranking member of the notorious Sinaloa cartel. A hitman and senior member of Los Antrax, one of the cartel's most infamous assassin squads, Velazquez was responsible for guarding drug shipments, protecting the family of Ismael El Mayo Zambada, and fighting rival gangs. Born in Sinaloa, Mexico, Velazquez was once just an ordinary truck driver before his recruitment by Los Antrax in 2008. His adept combat abilities quickly earned him the trust of his superiors, and he rose through the ranks to become one of the group's most trusted members. However, his loyalty to his boss would eventually land him in prison in the same year. In 2008, Velazquez turned himself in to authorities to allow his boss, Jose Rodrigo Arechiga Gamboa, alias El Chino Antrax, to escape during a shootout. Despite being incarcerated, Velazquez's influence was still felt. Authorities suspected that he controlled one of the prison sectors during his imprisonment. After his release from prison in 2014, Velazquez returned to Los Antrax as its second-in-command, known for his brutal tactics and personal involvement in numerous executions and violent attacks. His distinct appearance, sporting a long beard and a shaved head, only added to his fearsome reputation. However, Velázquez's reign of terror would end on October 30, 2016. In a clash with the Mexican army in Culiacan, Velázquez and several other leaders of Los Antrax were discovered at a home gathering. When they noticed law enforcement's presence, several members of Los Antrax attempted to flee the scene in their vehicles, while others tried to escape by running across the rooftops and yards of the neighborhood's houses. Velazquez and other gunmen decided to stay back and engage in a gunfight with the army. The army ultimately neutralized the situation and took the lives of three suspected leaders of Los Antrax, including Velazquez. His death significantly affected the Sinaloa cartel and Los Antrax, 
which suffered three casualties, three injuries, and six arrests during the clash. While authorities suspected that Velázquez and others decided to attack the army to allow El Mayito Flaco, the last of El Mayo's children that remained a fugitive, to escape, the army was able to thwart their plans and apprehend several members of the group. Thus ended the story of René Velázquez Valenzuela, a man whose life of crime and violence had earned him both infamy and a violent end. 3. Jesus Peña González Jesus Peña González, also known as L-20, was a high-ranking member of the Sinaloa cartel and the alleged founder of the infamous Los Antrax hit squad. He was arrested by Mexican authorities on August 18, 2017, after a two-year search. L-20 was born in Culiacán, Sinaloa, in 1975. He began his criminal career working as a bodyguard for Ismael El Mayo Zambada, one of the top leaders of the Sinaloa cartel. He was later recruited to join Los Antrax, a group of assassins responsible for fighting rival gangs, guarding drug shipments, and protecting the family of El Mayo. L-20 quickly rose through the ranks of Los Antrax, and he became known for his ruthless tactics and willingness to use extreme violence against his enemies. He was also allegedly involved in the trafficking of drugs, weapons, and people across the U.S.-Mexico border. In 2011, Mexican authorities arrested L-20 in Mexico City, but he was released a few months later due to a lack of evidence. He returned to work for the Sinaloa cartel and continued leading Los Antrax. In 2015, L-20 was indicted by a grand jury in the United States on charges of drug trafficking and money laundering. He was also added to the FBI's most wanted list, with a reward of $5 million for information leading to his arrest. On August 18, 2017, L-20 was finally apprehended by Mexican authorities in Mexico City after a lengthy chase. He was taken into custody without incident, and is currently awaiting extradition to the United States to face charges related to drug trafficking and money laundering. 4. Eliseo Imperial Castro Eliseo Imperial Castro, also known as Cheo Antrax, is considered the last ringleader of the Antrax after the arrest and subsequent execution of Rodrigo Arechiga Gamboa, also known as Chino Antrax. Cheo, the infamous nephew of Ismael El Mayo Zambada, has been a prominent figure in the Sinaloa cartel, one of the most notorious drug trafficking organizations in Mexico. Notably, he was known to be close to his cousin, El Mayito Gordo, and it is said that he was with him when he was arrested in November 2014, though he managed to escape. El Cheo Antrax, one of the founding members of the Sinaloa cartel, has been actively involved in the group's drug trafficking and money laundering operations. He operates locally to support Zambada in his battle against rival cells within the cartel, such as Los Chapitos, the sons of Joaquin Guzman Loera. At the national level, he is responsible for controlling drug trafficking in various states, and on the international front, he is involved in the distribution of drugs and money laundering. In 2016, El Cheo was identified as a senior member of Los Antrax by the Office for Foreign Assets Control, OFAC, which is attached to the Treasury Department. According to the OFAC, El Cheo's involvement in drug trafficking and money laundering operations is highly likely due to his familial relationship with Ismael El Mayo Zambada. Despite being a high-profile and notorious figure, El Cheo has managed to evade capture by law enforcement authorities. He is believed to be hiding, and his exact whereabouts are unknown, besides the fact that he is in Culiacan. However, the Sinaloa cartel is known for avoiding detection and maintaining a solid presence in the drug trade, even when authorities attempt to dismantle the organization. Thus, it is likely that El Cheo will continue to play a significant role in the cartel's operations, even if he remains in hiding. 5. Manuel Alejandro Aponte Gomez Manuel Alejandro Aponte Gomez, also known as El Bravo or The Fierce One, was a notorious hitman and a high-ranking leader of the Sinaloa Cartel, one of the largest drug trafficking organizations in Mexico. Born in Chilpanchingo, Guerrero, Mexico, in 1974, El Bravo had a diverse background, including serving in the Mexican Army Special Forces. His experience as a soldier would later come into play when he was sent to track down the notorious Sinaloa Cartel boss, El Chapo, during the Mexican Drug War.
During this time, El Chapo saw an opportunity to bribe El Bravo into switching sides, which worked. El Bravo became one of El Chapo's most trusted lieutenants, and eventually his head of security. He was responsible for building several tunnels in northern Mexico to aid El Chapo's escapes, and he was instrumental in helping El Chapo evade law enforcement for years. In 2012, El Bravo kidnapped Mexican Navy Operations Coordinator Rodrigo Vinas, and El Chapo bribed him into being a mole for the Sinaloa cartel. When Vinas attempted to lure El Chapo into a trap in Culiacan, El Bravo called in reinforcements to create a distraction before driving off the road, through a metal gate and onto another road, escaping from the military roadblock. This incident demonstrated El Bravo's quick thinking and resourcefulness, valuable traits in the world of drug trafficking. After Beltran Leva cartel boss Fausto Isidro Meza Flores attacked El Chapo's safe house in El Salto, El Chapo assigned Gomez to retaliate against Isidro. During this time, El Bravo rose in the ranks of the Sinaloa cartel and became a high-ranking leader within the organization. However, after El Chapo's capture in 2014, a power struggle ensued within the cartel, and El Bravo found himself in the crosshairs of rival factions. On April 9, 2014, El Bravo was tortured and shot several times before his remains were dumped in La Cruz de Elota, Sinaloa. His death marked the end of a chapter in the Sinaloa cartel's history, as he was known for being one of the organization's most fearsome and ruthless members. 6. Jorge Ivan Gastelum Avila Ivan Gastelum, also known as El Cholo Ivan, was a significant figure within the Sinaloa cartel and was widely regarded as one of El Chapo's most trusted allies. Born in Badiraguato, Sinaloa, Mexico, Gastelum started his career in the drug trade, working in the fields of the Sinaloa cartel, where he quickly rose through the ranks. Gastelum's reputation within the cartel grew as he gained the trust of El Chapo Loera. He began his work for the cartel by acting as a bodyguard for El Chapo's children and later became the personal bodyguard and security chief. Under El Chapo's guidance and protection, Gastelum became one of the cartel's most feared and influential figures. Despite being arrested several times, Gastelum was known for evading capture and maintaining his position of power within the Sinaloa cartel. In 2005, he was arrested for possessing 10 firearms, but was released by court order. In 2008, he was captured again after a violent confrontation with soldiers, but he escaped from prison a year later during a prison party. Gastelum's close relationship with El Chapo was highlighted during the latter's dramatic escape from prison in 2015. After his escape, El Chapo was greeted by Gastelum and his son, Ivan Archivaldo Guzman. In return for his loyalty, El Chapo made Gastelum the turf boss of Guamuchil. However, Gastelum's luck eventually ran out when he and El Chapo were captured by the Mexican Navy in 2016. While El Chapo was extradited to the United States, Gastelum continued to wield significant influence within the Sinaloa cartel. He continued to send Christmas presents to disadvantaged families in the Sinaloa municipalities of Salvador Alvarado and Mocorito in December 2018, showing that he still had a significant presence within the cartel even after El Chapo's extradition. The Sinaloa cartel has employed some of the most ruthless and deadly hitmen in the history of organized crime. Despite many of these hitmen being taken down by law enforcement, the Sinaloa cartel remains a powerful force in the drug trade, with many other dangerous figures waiting in the wings to take their place. Undoubtedly, the impact of these hitmen and the Sinaloa cartel on the drug trade and organized crime will continue to be felt for years. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more content on our channel.